This is an APC Smart UPS 2200 and I've been longing for one of these since about 2008 when I first saw one of the white ones in school and I just instantly fell in love. That one was from about 1998, this one's from it's the newest uh, version actually, it's got the fancy blue LCD screen thing so it's probably 2010 or newer I didn't really look at the model number on it but uh, ABC really have un outdone themselves with this generation of the smart UPS unit because uh, it's obviously got the bad swollen battery packs like they all get even in the late 2010s and uh, they've riveted these bars in place on both sides so these batteries are pretty well and truly stuck in there I actually haven't got a very clear idea in my head as to how to get those out of there and <laughs> it's really really quite efficient way to ruin the value of a UPS because uh, your normal corporate customer is just uh, going to bring it in for service when the batteries go bad and the service center is going to say yeah it's a major procedure to get the batteries out, get a new one so that of course plays in my favor since I don't mind making major procedures on stuff like this so I've disconnected the batteries, I dis did disassemble the pack that was in front which you, you could actually still get out of the unit but uh, the entire pack area seems to be almost entirely unventilated unlike the older models so it's a bit dodgy and we also use these uh, horrid new kind of Anderson but not really ABC proprietary connectors which are just pure evil uh, beyond that though it seems to be pretty true to the spirit of the smart UPS uh, brand well, it's still got the two giant uh, transformers running you know, at 50 Hertz uh, some big damn caps sitting in there those are just giant 75 volt uh, 1500 microfarads and of course as all of these units it runs on 48 volts so you can I can run four of my giant 170 amp hour power safe batteries with this thing and just keep on chugging forever I'm not certain how the 2200 XL compares to this one but uh, this thing will probably do well over 1000 watts continuously you know, with very little data about that actually these are some rather hefty transformers they are they're quite uh, low but they are very wide and very deep so they can probably do over 500 VA each I would reckon especially since the fan cooled so I found this unit lying face down in a in the snow outside and it had been sitting like that for a while and uh, some kind soul has uh, probably caused a battery failure by sticking this uh, warning don't connect the UPS without uh, connecting the batteries sticker over the fan and that's essentially saved uh, most of the logic board from getting showered by water it's meditate fairly well though even though it's a kind of a springy winter it's got some corrosion down in this uh, voltage regulator here but it looks pretty okay and uh, there's nothing really on the back side of the board looking bad because it's uh, covered by a plastic sheet and I had a look underneath it's entirely clean so unless this thing was actually scrapped for some internal malfunction other than having a broken battery stuck inside it uh, I'd say this thing has a decent chance of powering up uh, as it sits so I figured we'd just uh, clamp on a couple of wires to that log down there and uh, this heatsink here uh, you know, uh, yeah they're just going parallel in the Anderson connector anyway and we'd see if there's any life in it I've never powered on one of these uh, newer APC UPSs before so it's going to be a bit of an experiment and uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not it works alright we've got a couple of leads going now and we've got 57 volts coming out of a power supply and when I turn it on so let's see what it does looking reasonable enough it shouldn't 
shouldn't be drawing any current. I think that painted plaque actually says 10 milliamps when nothing's been drawn. It's got a bit of a cal issue. So, uh, let's see if it's alive. Fan running, so... Oh, 12 volt regulator still working, drawing 180 milliamps. APC by Schneider. That sounds annoying but healthy. Hey, you can actually mute the alarm on this. That's not bad. Status. Okay, what's our status? On battery. Efficiency not available. I wonder what the efficiency... Oh, it's actually got an internal power meter. It's going to be interesting to see how accurate that is. Invalid key, yeah, yeah. What else? Main menu, status. Configuration. Language. Menu type, standard. Okie dokes. Well, alarm on off. Hey, this isn't too bad. Oh, it's got batteries from July, no, from June 2022. <laughs> right, uh, that's probably 2012 then. Or is it the back to defaults? Yeah, it's probably already is it the defaults. That's not too bad of a lang bad of a menu, really. What can you? Oh yeah, you can adjust it by doing that. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> Uh, whatever options we have for a menu. No. Um, well, come on. Oh. Wow, well, this thing's got. Oh, it's confusing where you've got escape, which is the menu key, and then you've got to. Uh, enter. Ah, uh, 2200. Part number, serial number. Manufacture date, September 2010. Huh. Replace battery by 2026. Yeah. That one's doing fine till 2026, just another decade. Huh. Firmware, firmware. And we're back there. Ah, that's confusing, the escape key. Okay, so what other options do we have for our menu? Oh, advanced menu. That sounds nice. So what can, what's that do? Oh, you can adjust. Oh, that's not bad at all. You can adjust all kinds of stuff. Reset energy meters. Does it actually count the energy? Wow, this. Jeez, this stuff has. Lots of settings. Jesus. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. play around with that. But wow, that, that's fancy. That's very fancy. I must say, that's a new feature. I don't mind in this. Because it's a bit of a bother having to uh, use a serial console to configure everything in the other ones. And yeah, the, any graphical application for Visa has always been crap. Yeah, this is not bad, not bad at all. I really like this. Yeah, this thing is... Uh, the load test is fine, then uh, I'm torn whether or not I'm going to make it into my solar inverter. Since uh, that's also a 48 volt system, or if I'm just going to... Used as my main UPS. Hmm, that's a tough decision, really. A really tough decision. Yeah, that stick has been on there for a while. Why on earth would they get the idea to put a sticker over the fan? I mean, that that just makes no sense. All right, I think I figured out a reasonably non-destructive way to get these uh, old batteries out of this thing. See, so, while it's really, really swollen on this side, and that's not going anywhere, uh, it's not quite as bad on the other side. This one's made it out a lot better. So, I think by just uh, 
using one of these to split the battery pack in two because they're just uh, probably taped together and probably slightly welded and when they run hot. And I think I might be able to get the left side battery out and then extract the right side battery, although yeah, it's going to be an issue because they're also bolted together. Hmm, yeah, that's actually not going to work. APC battery extraction, live on camera. And there we go. So I ended up taking off this uh, bar on the other side as well. And uh, then I just spent about 10 minutes with a hammer, that, and a knife just to trying to pry and cut away the glue between the batteries in order to separate them. And now they're just going to pop out easily. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty deformed battery. Not the worst I've seen, but it's getting there. It's really getting there. It seems just the pressure on the sides has just caused it to bulge out at the ends instead, which is kind of unusual. But yeah, we actually have X side batteries in this, which uh, kind of surprises me because X side tend to be very decent, very decent indeed. So it's probably got more to do with uh, the fact that the UPS seems to have had insufficient ventilation and they probably overheated the batteries rather than running them to the ground by overcharging. We could really excite, I mean, the, the, they own Sun and Shine today and Sun and Shine don't go bad and you would assume that they'd be putting some of that technology into their cheaper batteries because these aren't Sun and Shine branded obviously and they're leaking something all over now. Yeah, yeah smells like water. <laughs> uh, yeah, although they probably have an interest in selling cheap batteries for cheap and having them not last long so that they get to sell more expensive batteries. So, who knows, perhaps these are just generic China batteries like all of the others. Uh, anyway, alright now, so now I've just got to mount these with some screws rather than rivets and uh, we'll be on our way. And they've actually got to a serial number and 1038 the serial number on the UPS starts with 1039 so these are going to be the original batteries for the unit from 2010 so as it's all to come up with these the owners just never bothered to replace the batteries and then they uh, got themselves in a situation where it was just the most economical call to buy a new UPS uh, technically if you follow APC's recommendations for battery change intervals, you probably wouldn't end up in this situation. So, I suppose APC's e aren't entirely to blame for this kind of behaviour, but yeah, they're obviously doing that on purpose. There's very little question about that. Alright, I'm now giving this a bit of a clean out and reattach these bars with some more sensible Phillips head attachments and it really seems this thing is in pretty great shape. I've gone through all the uh, caps, even the uh, 22 microfarad caps, which tend to fail in all APC UPSs, it seems. Uh, and uh, they measure just fine, so I'm going to leave these there for the time being. And this one, they are 22 microfarad, 25 volt Jamicons. I haven't checked the series, this might be TL series, it seems. And they mess it just fine, they mess it pretty much like my new replacement caps. So that's all fine and dandy. Same goes for pretty much all the other caps in inside. I'm quite surprised actually. Never, never seen this in uh, an APC that's this, this old before. And I also took the liberty of cutting out this uh, rear stupid fan grill because uh, I've never fancied these. I did note it while doing that that they have used a very thick steel for making this thing, so props to APC for that. Seems to be galvanized of some kind, so pretty corrosion resistant and nice. The fan, if you're curious, seems to be a high cool brand. Fans for electronics, and it's even got an APC part number on it. And it's a sleeve bearing, nothing really too fancy. 24 volts, 210 milliamps. Pretty generic. 
I think I'm going to just uh, uh, discard this fan and uh, install some temperature controlled uh, 120 mm fans instead. I've put a couple of on order of the same kind that I used in the power tubes down there because at the moment this uh, does have two fan speeds high and low but even the low speed is kind of loud-ish so I figured I'd give it a bit of an upgrade I'm not going to sell this thing obviously it's uh, it's my boy dream to have one of these so it's never going to leave my ownership unless I get my hands on a white one in case I'll probably use that instead because it's just cooler but yeah beyond that there's a view on the back of the board pretty nice looking very clean good quality solder joints and lots of increased current handling traces going on nice uh, fiberglass board as well nothing wrong with that Although, real weedy, weirdy, is uh, this uh, wire for the uh, front panel is just held in with a zip tie. That's that's just weird. They are making these custom smart slots and custom plastics, otherwise I don't get why they wouldn't have a proper mind for that. I mean, just uh, one of those little metal screw hole uh, Bendy things which you wrap around with wire would be more suitable, but yeah, it works, I suppose. It's just nice to see that they've moved away from the thin plastic wires they usually use for these panels and just gone with a standard multi conductor wire. So that's pretty nice to see. We should actually take the front cover off of this since uh, this was down in the snow, so any water should actually have gathered in this and anything which made it uh, all the way through, so there might be some additional water damage in there. It would all be kind of cool to see what electronics we we're having the actual display board. And the entire front panel assembly basically just snaps apart. So you've got these big snaps of a big plastic. Then you've got these snaps here, six of them holding the plastic bracket you thing in place. Then that snaps apart to pop the front panel button plastic out. And uh, then you get the PCB. And there really isn't much in here. As you'd probably expect, uh, we've got uh, a Sm Schmidt trigger there and a shift register to the right and a couple of transistors and LEDs and that seems to be it. So really no smarts in there. Just a little front panel unit. Hmm, this thing could actually be repurposed if you wanted to. The display seems to be of pretty nice quality and it's uh, a pretty integrated module. I like the format of that. You can just uh, snap it out in case you manage to break the display. Although that is unlikely since it actually is behind this uh, plastic front panel. So yeah, that's not too bad. I quite like the solution. Uh, the black plastic is probably not going to go brittle and fail like the snaps holding the front panels on uh, all the white APC UPSs tend to do. So this is all nice and dandy. I like it. I really do like the way they made the uh, main piece of this unit because it it's just attached with uh, two screws, one there and one there. And uh, it's uh, sitting on these uh, little rivety things where it can just uh, slide back and forth in order to attach it or detach it. And there's another slide down there. So, really, in order to get this board out, all you need to do is disconnect everything, slide it out, and pick it out. That's a lot easier than it used to be on the APC unit which has have the board mounted up here where you've got screws holding it down from the top and a million connectors on the bottom. So that's a really nice, really nice design feature. I love products which do this because I mean it has to be cheaper to manufacture, right? Just sliding the board in and putting two screws in rather than having a million screws which have to be probably hand hand tightened. And because I'm me, I of course want to add an external battery connector to this thing. And APC have done made that uh, a bit more annoying on this model than uh, it's been in uh, previous generations of these uh, because this is a 750 XL unit and uh, as you can see it's just got uh, a cutout in this uh, rear plate and uh, there's uh, a mount on the side chassis uh, where you can just screw an under and connect it in and that's the same whether or not uh, it's an XL unit or not uh, they just uh, don't add this hole in the case on the non-XL unit so you just have to cut that out and screw your connector in place 
and uh, there seems to be no extended runtime version of these uh, larger, newer units. But they just do the XL version that's in the rack mode these days. So there's no real accommodation for an Anderson connector or evil APC non Anderson connector. So I'm going to do the old fashioned way, uh, which I used to do too many years ago, which is to uh, sacrifice the smart slot because uh, there isn't much room on either of these uh, rear plates to mount the Anderson connector and I'd have to make a 90 degree bracket to screw it in place because you mount these with these two holes so yeah you'd have to have a bracket going back and then the connector mounted and these, these are pretty large connectors you can't just uh, shove them in anywhere and uh, I don't use the smart slot so they make for quite excellent uh, points to have these plugs in uh, so I'm just uh, gonna cut a hole in this uh, blanking plate and uh, screw the connector into the slot running some wires out of it. The upside of doing this is that I can just mount a new fuse for the external battery on the plastic for this because the fuses which are these, uh, I don't know what the package is called, but they obviously mount uh, very, w without any proper real bracket, they just uh, are made to go between the batteries so you have to have some kind of a plastic uh, insert in order to mount them like we've done here. So I'm just going to do that, get the Dremel out, do some cutting and we'll have this unit running with external batteries in no time. And some rough uh, cutting, grinding, crimping and soldering later we've got this little external battery connection module. So all I've done is obviously cut a hole in the rear back plate Mount the Anderson connector as intended, drawn the cables out where the original smart slot connector would go, and I mounted a new 100 amp APC fuse on the back, which is just attached by running some screws in from the inside of the box. I've also just connected the negative terminal on there and uh, that's going to run off to the eight bit of the original fuse whereas uh, those two wires are the positives which are going to connect straight onto the heat sinks where the original positive wires go in other words the negative goes there and uh, the positive goes there and there so I've measured all the wires to length and it should just hook straight in so all we've got to do now is mount it well, I'm blind, aren't I? Because that's quite obviously a pre-threaded uh, main for an Anderson connector. Duh. Anyway, it would have been about the same amount of work uh, mounting it there, since most of this stuff is to, uh, to do with the wiring, which uh, really when, when, you, when I use these smart slots, it gives a very handy module, because I can just undo three bolts and everything comes out now. But yeah, I should have seen that thing, duh. Anyway, this is what the final result looks like, and I must say I'm quite happy with this. It's turned out quite well. The plastic's a bit rickety, but uh, it's uh, definitely sturdy enough to plug and unplug. No issues, it's not going to fall out. And the wiring turned out pretty okay. Got it loomed up there, going to where it's supposed to go. I to, had to actually file out a slight bit of the aluminium here because it seems APC haven't actually threaded the metal before mounting the wire. They just uh, used the self-tapping screw so there was a horrible little ridge around the screw where that's, yeah, the original connector's probably not made very good contact with the actual heat sink. It's just gone through the lock washer and, and the screw and then into the heat sink so that's not too good, that could potentially run very hot, and I think I saw that in well, one of these APC units. An old one is just uh, run extremely hot, so the washer was all uh, discoloured. But yeah, shouldn't have any issues like that now. I've improved it, and everything's looking quite nice. I don't have any real proper super hype 
tower 48, 48 volt power supply to test for this wolf so we're just going to have to give it a go with the EX752 over there so let's just get to it and see if I've wired the connector up right positive to positive, negative to negative, this should power on oh, there's no smoke That's running quite happily, I'd say. Sweet, and now all I've got to do is pick up some proper batteries to this thing and uh, mount the fan. And the idle consumption seems to be about 1.25 amps or about 67, 70 watts thereabout. This is just the proper sound of proper UPS is supposed to make. None of that squealing switch mode rubbish. Just a slight overtone of a PWM and a big deep 50 hertz hum. Oh, there we go, all mounted back together. So I've now made this uh, rather dodgy cable for just uh, testing stuff. It was especially dodgy down here where I've just uh, shoved some crimp connectors into these uh, connection blocks in order to make it a bit more flexible. I'm going to test this with a couple of different things perhaps, so I think they'll do for some testing at least, but yeah, they're uh, quite likely to catch fire if I leave them running at high load for too long. And uh, I also made the fan back up of course, uh, I used some proper Noctua rubber mounts to make it a bit disconnected from the case just to quiet it down slightly don't think it's going to make a huge difference because this fan was quite quiet actually to begin with and yeah it's going to get replaced anyway once I get the new fans it'll do for the time being just a little extra so I think I'm going to take this to the solar room now and we'll hook it up to the giant 48 volt bank alright we are all wired up <laughs> So the lights in here off right now because they're on the same break as everything else and uh, I just turned the top in or off in order to wear off the UPS so it's connected there on the secondary side and when I flip that uh, hopefully nothing will catch fire. So here goes nothing. Now we've got power, the light should come on in a moment. There we go. So is the UPS going to run? Yes, indeed. I don't even remember that I turned the alarm off. So let's uh, fetch some suitable high power load and give this a bit of a stress test. Alright, well, now I've got my 2. Point something kilowatt blower connected up there, so let's turn it on on some setting and see what it does. So let's just uh, stop a fan. And 650 watts. That seems to be working. Drawing about 15 amps. That shouldn't be make, get, making anything hot, really. Not ever. Nope. Let's off the game. Let's go for 1.35 kilowatts. Yep. Yeah. 1346 watts. Curious how it's using less VAs when it's using watts, so that's a bit weird. And now we're drawing about 30 amps, and is anything going to get hot because of that? I really don't trust my connections here, but no, it seems quite right. 11 degrees Celsius. This room isn't heated in any way whatsoever, so. You shouldn't expect it to be warm of that, not in the middle of winter anyway. Nothing here is getting hot either, so let's do the full power, 2.3 kilowatts is what it's rated for, let's see if the UPS is going to do it.
Oh, stop it. Two thousand watts. Just at the brink of its power limit. It isn't even shouting at me. I'm drawing just under 50 amps, 48. These might be getting warm now. No, that's actually surprisingly cool. I was expecting the contact resistance inside of the connection blocks to be rather considerable, but apparently not. I think 50 amps is just fine, but uh, we really are pushing it for these little dinky wires. Uh, these can probably, yeah, might be six square millimeters or so, so they're just, just about going to handle 50 amps, but uh, there's not a whole lot to spare. That would do have a quite nice and comfortable heat coming out of there. 150 degrees heating wire. And the UPS is certainly not breaking its weight. Yeah, I think the battery is running down. I think we're at more... I don't think we've consumed 25% of that yet, but... I suppose we haven't calibrated it either. Let's just uh, see how efficient this thing really is. I'm inclined to believe this power meter seems reasonable enough. This one's always been a tad on the low side as far as power is concerned. So our input voltage at, at the connector at the back of the UPS is just about 49.34 volts and the current is I'm gonna call that 49 amps it's jumping around quite sporadically but yeah around 49 amps so we get 2417.6 watts in and we're putting out still probably about two kilovolts kilovolts kilowatts yeah uh, that gives us an efficiency of 82.7%. So that's not too impressive, not for full load. Not too impressive at all, actually. <laughs> Barely competing with that thing. But I suppose we are providing quite a bit more power, so let's just give it a check at it. Uh, let's drop it to 1.3 kilowatts. And that gives us an input power of 1589 watts and an output power of 1366 and an efficiency of 85.9%. So that's a bit more respectable, but still not not hugely good by any means. But we are still pushing 1.35 kilowatts and it's not breaking as well. That's certainly outclassing that device over there, which can just barely do 800 watts. So this is definitely a winner as far as I'm concerned. I'm really torn whether or not it's going to stick out the solar system or if it's going to go to the main UPS in the workshop. Hmm. Well, it's been run like this for quite a while now and uh, I'm quite uh, impressed. It's uh, run way past it when it's considered the battery to be empty and it hasn't turned off, it hasn't even sounded an alarm. So I'm very happy to see that APC just ha haven't gone the route of considering, oh no, the you've run longer than your batteries allow you to, we'd better shut off now. It actually seems to run continuously just fine. So props to ABC for that. And <laughs> I must say props to my horrid connection job over there because that hasn't caught fire yet and it isn't even getting particularly warm at all. Anyway, I figured we'd just turn that off now and plug it back in because I'm a bit curious to see how quickly this recharges our batteries and uh, that's one of the reasons I like these uh, traditional APC UPSs the battery is always entirely isolated from the grid so there's no risk in me doing that and uh, having it connected to my entire open battery setup here because everything is going through the two transformers in the unit and they are isolating transformers, not auto transformers. So this can actually double as a charger for my solar system if I needed to. It would use something that one won't do because uh, it's just got a buck regulator for charging the battery, so it uh, puts the battery at uh, live potential, which is no good, no good at all. So what we have 
is wat 4 amps. Nu wat wat 4 amps. A pretty decent charge rate for 48 volts. About 200 watts or so. Not too bad at all. There you go. I can't ever figure out how to turn this thing off. No delay. There we go. Power down. Running the fan to charge the batteries. So there you go. APC Smart UPS 2200 from 2010 picked out of the trash in 2016. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.